Good morning to you all. You are very welcome to join us for worship at Castle Methodist Church, Colchester, by whatever means you are joining us today. I often think we take our regular musicians for granted. We only notice when they're not available, which is the case today. We are extremely grateful to Pat French, who has come to play for us today. We're also delighted to welcome Sally Crather, who is our preacher today, and we know that she will help us into our greater understanding of our wonderful Lord. So let's pause for a moment's reflection, remembering that we have indeed come here to worship. Well, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day to be talking about creation and to look out and see so many smiling faces is a true blessing. So we begin our worship today with our call to worship, which is Psalm 104, verses 1 and 10 to 26. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are the very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He makes spring pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the fields. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing amongst the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruits of his work. He makes grass grow for ca the cattle and the plants for people to cultivate. Bring forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens human hearts oils to make their faces shine and the bread that sustains their heart the trees of the lord are well watered the cedars of lebanon that he planted there the birds made their nests the storks had its home in the jupiters the high mountains belong to the wild goats the crags are the refuse of the hyraps he made the moons to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness and it becomes night, and the beasts of the forests prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their works, to their labours until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. The sea, a vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond numbers, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the leather them which you formed to frolic there. What an image that psalmist creates of the entire world, the whole of creation, the land, the sea, the sun, the light. It's just amazing. And just bring this 
think back to present day, I just wanted to share a prayer with you because we're, we're having a circuit day on the 4th of March, which is a Saturday, and it's about serving the present age. And we've been very naughty. We've been calling it a spa day. So please don't turn up in your swimming costumes because it won't be right. So, a prayer for this week then. Generous God, may the light of your spirit highlight the places which need our help. May the strength of your spirit embolden us to bring our faith, time, resources into those places. May the wisdom of your spirit inspire us with the right words and the deeds in every situation. And may each small sacrifice we make in helping others reflect your compassion, your supreme justice, and your unending love for all people, so that every act of service becomes an act of worship which speaks your glory. Amen. And now I invite you to stand, if you're able, for our first song, which is Sing for God's Glory, the Colours, the Dawn of Creation, which is found in Sing in the Faith 116 or on our glorious screens.
I don't know whether this bit, this is an introduction to the talk. I don't know whether it will work, but we'll try it and see. So let's see what happens when I press this one. So that's an introduction to the introduction. So the introduction is entitled Feeling Hot, Hot, Hot. I had a notice, play music, I've done that. So go back to the summer. In July, we had some scorching days. I don't know whether you can remember them or not. Um, with the change of weather now. But the temperatures in our country got up to 40 degrees centigrade. And I remember I saw a demonstration of an egg actually being caught on top of a bonnet of a car. It was that hot. Um, and again, in August, we had temperatures rising. And... I don't know about you, but that nudged me to think that actually there's something going on with our, our weather. We, we definitely are having extreme weather. And then when you sort of explore around the world, then you can see the, the, the less developed nations are having an even worse time with extreme climate changes. And just last week we heard the terrible news of the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria and actually the scientists are saying they weren't predicting that there would be as large eruption as there was and they're, they're, they are contributing the, the severity and the frequency of earthquakes in that area of the world is um, due to climate change. So th that's left us feeling pretty horrible, I think. The, you know, the, the amount of suffering and dying and, and the tragedies, you know, imagine surviving in that situation, having absolutely nothing. Um, it just goes without thinking. Now, as Christians today, we need to affirm that there is a climate emergency going on and together we need to repent and then we need to change our behaviour to stop the climate crisis getting any worse. And scientists have said if we don't act now, we could have more serious climate breakdown as early as 2030. Well, we're in 2020 now, aren't we? So n not even a, de uh, a decade away. And to downplay the serious of that situation or to be half-hearted about acting really does go against the values of the kingdom of God, where the values for us as callers of Christ is to act with justice, love, joy, mercy and and grace but also as Christians we're meant to be hopeful but I would say to you denial is not hope real hope needs to be bedded in the truth so what went wrong and as people of the kingdom of God what should we be doing about it today right you may have noticed when you came in Hopefully you're given a white strip of paper and you were also given a little hazelnut. If I can ask you not to eat your hazelnut until after it is used in the service and then what you choose to do with it after that is great. But if inadvertently you haven't got a hazelnut when um, we need it, put your hands up 
and providing you've not got a nut allergy, a steward will give you one. Okay? So, we're going to explore four things today. So, we're not going to have a traditional sermon as such. We're going to have worship, prayers, songs, and little bits of me talking in between. So, the, the first little talk is going to be considering that God is king of creation. Then the second little talk will explore, well, why have we damaged creation? The third is a reminder that Jesus always gives us hope. And the fourth, which may get a bit messy, but hopefully it'll be fine, is our invitation to respond. So that's where you'll be using the slip of paper to consider one pledge you personally can make to improve our current climate. And then that will be collected during our hymn. And when we bless the offertory, we'll also bless our pledges. So now can I invite you to pray with me? Have a moment's silence. Creator and loving God, we believe and trust in you. The whole earth is alive with your glory, and all that has life is sustained by you. Help us to commit ourselves to cherish your world and function as people of God's kingdom is amongst us. We pray for you sending your son, Jesus, to earth. He grew, lived, and proclaimed the coming of your kingdom. Indeed, he was the firstborn of creation and understood its ways. Friend of the wildlife, speaking to the sea, controlling the wind, he died for us to forgive our sins and to show by his death on the cross that we were reconciled to a closer relationship with you and all of your creation. Now risen Christ is with us in the care of a damaged world and the Holy Spirit healing, comfort, integrity and truth is brooding over creation. Help us to commit ourselves to collaborate with you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to renew your world. And a confession. God, we are so sorry that your once fertile earth is being stripped by man of its riches. We are sorry that your living water are slowly being choked by chemicals of humankind. We are sorry that your once clear air is being filled by pollutants. We are sorry that your creatures and plant life are slowly dying and that your people are dying too. God, creator, sustainer of all creation, move us by the wonders of creation. Encourage us to repent and care more deeply that we learn to cherish and protect your world from further damage. Amen. And we know that we get an assurance of pardon. So God of good earth, who offers us forgiveness in advance of completing actions, show us our place and purpose. God does forgive us for the sake 
of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right, we're going to have a little play now. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Um, but in between, I've um, woven the um, creation version of the Lord's Prayer. And also, as we're using the Lord's Prayer, so it's available to all, so it's in other language too. So we'll see how we go. So. What will happen, we'll say a line together and then I will say the creation line and then we'll go on to the second line of the Lord's Prayer and we won't get in a mess because it's all up on the screen. Okay, so our Father who art in heaven, hallowed you be thy name. Parents of the soul and sky, May our praise reveal your beauty. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. May your encircling love bear fruit as sun, rain, and snow empowers creation. Give today our daily bread. Provide for life all that sustains. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Free us from stubborn arrogance and all it brings, that we enable change for fellow creatures. Save us in the midst of what our kind has brought about, Deliver life from evil. It is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. For the seasons, the cycles, and the power of life are yours, now and through all endings. Amen. Let it be so. Now, I'm looking around. I don't think we've got any of our younger class. That's absolutely fine. We will speed on. You don't want a children's talk, do you? No, no. Well, you're not having a choice. You're not having one. Um, so we'll speed on with our next hymn, which is God in his love for us lent us this planet, which is sin in the faith, <coughs> seven to seven.
now could we have our readers? The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 10 and 13 to 20. The parable of the sower. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching he said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a 100 times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand the parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes it away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like the seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the work, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, 30, 60, or even a 100 times what was sown. Thanks be to God for his word. The second reading is taken from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. The supremacy of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. 
Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Thanks be to God. So the king of creation. God is the creator of everything. And then, as is Genesis 1.31 says, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Everything in our universe, our solar system, and all life on earth are entirely dependent on God for their origin and continuing existence. In the Old Testament, God was depicted as a ruler or king over all of creation. The Old Testament pointed also towards a Messiah associated with the future kingdom and supplies the background for Jesus' ministry. Jesus' teaching proclaimed the kingdom of God, but he also called for a response of faith and discipleship from those chose, who chose to follow him. We heard in our epistle reading that Jesus is supreme the kinship of Jesus, the head of the church, called to have the values of the kingdom of God, to prevent further damage to earth by leading more simple lives and being more in tuned on how to prevent further damage to God's planet. From the Psalms to the Gospel, we see the way creation can reveal more of God's character and inspire us to worship and see how God delights and finds joy in all that he has made. And Psalm 104, which was our call to worship today, and Mark 4, our gospel reading today, differ in so many ways. They were written by different authors in different times of history in different places, different times. But what do they have in common? The psalmist recounts the beauty of creation, declaring, O oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made, and in your wisdom you've made them all. The psalmist goes on to describe the habitats of the birds and where the wild goats and lion, and even where the leather them, which is a type of sea monster, I believe. I did have to look that up. And also goes on and talks about the, the wonders of mountains and trees and streams. And then similarly, in the New Testament passage, passage from Mark, Jesus proves that he knows about creation. In the parable of the sower, he uses his relationship with nature to teach about the kingdom of God. The seeds, that's God's words, are scattered by the farmer, Jesus. 
and where they land depends on how they will thrive. Only those seeds which fall on the fertile soil can be cropped, and this demonstrates that the kingdom of God is able to grow in its effectiveness as its members are like seeds who, are, who grow in good fertile soil. And Jesus shows his familiarity with nature again in that passage by telling us what hinders the crops, such as lack of water or harsh grounds where the roots cannot get established, or the weeds choking the shoots on shallow grounds. All ways that the growth of God's kingdom can be hindered. So we sing again now, thinking about our earth. We're going to sing, Touch the Earth Lightly, which is Singing the Faith 729. So now we have to consider how have we damaged creation and has that gone against the values of the kingdom of God? We live in an affluent western country and historically we have and are still contributing to climate change. We contribute to the global economy but in our busy day-to-day -day lives, do we stop to consider how our lifestyles is destroying Earth and contributing to the climate changes? Surely as humans and followers of Christ, we should take the time and make changes to protect creation from further harm. We should be pleased to be included in God's kingdom. And in the Lord's Prayer, 
the petition for the coming of the kingdom means just as we are praying for earth to be like heaven and not for us to continue to harm it. The climate emergency is causing droughts, floods and storms to be more frequent and severe. We've misused and damaged this beautiful gift from God. Think of the erupting volcanoes in Syria and Turkey, the futile loss of human life, the survivors, the rescuers, and the impact on their lives, the sufferings of droughts. We feel some of the effects in the UK, but the impacts are already hitting people in poverty the hardest. The underlying message of the New Testament is to love God and to love our neighbours. Think about the story of the Good Samaritan. We are called to love God and love our neighbours too. But are we fulfilling that role as the people of God's kingdom? If we don't change our lifestyle, it will be the poor and the vulnerable who will suffer first but we will all suffer, all of creation, and parts of the earth will no longer be inhabitable for plants, creatures, and humans alike. Take, for example, the Horn of Africa, including Ethiopia and Kenya. People are experiencing the driest conditions and hottest temperatures since current record keeping began with little rain in four years. Crops are withering and farm animals are dying. And what's more, many of the poorer countries are using their money to deal with these climate emergencies rather than spending it on health care or education. And is that fair justice? And justice is such an important value of the kingdom of God. The science is clear. The climate crisis is being caused by a way our society and our economy works. And the impacts, impacts are accelerating, and particularly in the third world. We're running out of time to prevent the worst effects. The problem of climate change does go against our values of the kingdom of God. And that as members, we need to act now. We are required to seek justice for all of creation. We need to prepare to make changes to our own lifestyles. We need to speak out and influence our local communities, our governments, our global sisters and brothers in Christ who are suffering now because of the way Western society has in the past and what more is still living their lifestyles. We sing again. Um, Please stand if you're able. We're going to sing the kingdom of God, which is singing the faith 255.
So I want to explore with you how we find hope in Jesus. Paul speaks to the churches at Colossus, declaring that the whole universe was made through Jesus and it was made for him. The verse we heard earlier, I thought, are thought to be part of a hymn and are describing Jesus' supremacy or kinship. And verse 19 and 20, I think, deserve a special mention. For in him, referring to Jesus, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The passage implies that it wasn't just Jesus, it wasn't just us Jesus came to save. Jesus came to begin the restoration of the world to how God intended it to be. To make all things new. Christ is the source, the sustainer and the saviour of creation. And as the members of the body of Christ, we through the Holy Spirit have been called to preserve and make God's planet more sustainable for all of creation and to live up to the challenge of furthering God's creation. Jesus' values, Jesus values creation, shows us how it reveals the love of his Father and brings restoration and healing, uniting everything back with God, bringing God's kingdom that is in heaven to earth. The basis for Christian response to climate change is hope. Hope in the realisation of the reign of God over a renewed creation. Jesus came to begin the restoration of the world to how God intended it to be. Jesus said that in his own presence, there were the first signs of the kingdom of God had arrived on earth. He had come to make all things new, to show us how to be part of the kingdom of God. Followers of Christ must hope in these days and not despair. If we've affirmed the goodness of God's creation, that God became human in the person of Jesus Christ, and God's promise of redemption, we cannot despair of what will be because we are called to have faith in God and hope in God's promises. We can have hope because of Jesus' death on the cross. All things can be made new. Everything sin has broken and corrupted is being restored and reconciled to God. And what's more, we can be a part of it. Jesus invites each one of us to take part in his mission in this world for God's kingdom to advance and for heaven and earth to be alike. We all need to understand that the climate emergency is here, but we need to be inspired by God's love for creation and his heart for justice to repent and make lifestyle changes. So, shortly we're going to have some prayers followed by some intercessions, but I want you to start thinking now of a pledge you personally can make and commit to to try and improve our climate. I'll give you some hints in the next talk, but it would be nice if it comes from you as a, as, as a gift back to God. 
This is the call of the kingdom. Damage of the earth has already been done, but by changing to a simpler lifestyle, hint, and caring for creation, we can reduce obnoxious gases into the earth's atmosphere and be worthy to be called members of the kingdom of God, to love, adore, and value, and restore creation. Amen. Have you still got your hazelnuts? Has any, does anyone want to confess to have eaten it and need another one? Right. So, if you haven't done already, place the hazelnut in the palm of your hand. And just take a good look at it. And we'll just have a moment's silence just to look at the hazelnut. This tiny thing in the palm of our hand is all of creation in its smallness and its helplessness. This little thing called creation, God continues because God loves it. And in this way, everything has it been by the love of God. In the words of the mystic Julian of Norwich, who lived in the 13th century herself, she said, in this little thing, I saw three characteristics. The first is that God made it. The second is God loves it. And the third, that God keeps it. God made creation. God loves it. God keeps it. I invite you to keep hold of your hazelnut while we pray for others and ourselves. And there will be a, a bid and a response. So when I say God made creation, can we all respond, God loves it, God keeps it. God made creation, God loves it, God keeps it. So we've been asked to remember in our prayers um, people attached to, to Castle um, Church. We remember the family of Margaret Jackson, son-in-laws, whose home and local community was destroyed in the earthquake in Turkey. We remember, too, Paul Liddington Wright, who has been diagnosed with cancer. Sustaining God, in this year of tumult and challenge, when we have learnt already that more change is possible than we wanted to cope with, we need to change the way we live to save Earth from further harm. We are your co-workers to further the kingdom of God. Give us hope for the future and your wisdom to change our ways. The confidence to speak up to those in power so your Earth becomes a cleaner and kinder place to live. God made creation, God loves it, God keeps it. Creator God, giver of life, you sustain the earth and direct the nations. In this time of climate crisis, grant us clarity to hear the
the groaning of the creation and the cry of the cause. Challenge us to change our lifestyles. Guide our leaders to take courageous action. Enable your church to be a beacon of hope and foster within us a renewed vision of your purpose for your world. God made creation, God loves it, God keeps it. Heavenly God, we bring before you the many people around the world facing extreme poverty due to the climate crisis. We pray for those now living with food shortages and uncertain crop yields. We pray for those who have fled their homelands due to the extreme weather disasters and those who have become climate refugees. We pray for those who are yet to be born, that climate action is taken urgently so that all will have a safe place to live. God made creation, God loves it, God keeps it. Caring God, we bring before you our local community who are suffering due to the global economy. Prices for food and heating are still rising at an alarming rate and people we know are struggling even to meet their basic needs. Thank you for the food banks, the clothes banks and the fuel banks that help, but help us to find a more sustainable way of living where your earth resources are shared more equitably with all. God made creation, God loves it, God keeps it. Comforting God. We bring before you those who are sick and those who are dying. May they be aware of your presence and know of your love. We think of those who are grieving for the deaths of their loved ones and may you comfort and reassure them. God made creation, God loves it, God keeps it. And our God, we pray for ourselves. We are filled with hope for the future of your planet. We realise that we all need to make changes to our lifestyle for your planet to survive. And as we pray for the coming of the kingdom in every situation, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by and for whom all things were made. Amen. Right, so this is an invitation to respond. And I don't mind if you switch off from me droning on, um, but please think about what you would like to pledge for the climate today. And if you want to write it down, what we'll do after this little talk, we'll have a hymn and there'll be the opportunity to drop it into a collection bag. And then when we bless our off tree, we will also bless um, our pledges to God. So, how can we respond? Well, I want us this morning to do two things. To pray and to repent. And once we've done that, to move to action. So that we can address the huge injustices of climate changes and its impact on the poorest people around the world. We are running out of time and I personally feel it would be irresponsible if we declare that we are kin um, Kingdom of God members, that we don't make any changes and we don't speak out. Now there will be lots of opportunity for us all as individuals and collectively as a church family to speak up and take action 
and I would invite us all to take a climate pledge today. And it can be simple as sorting out the garden, perhaps growing fruits and vegetables, getting a tree planted somewhere, just getting to know your MP and find out locally what's been done to reduce carbon emissions, uh, joining a national campaign that responds to today's climate crisis, travel less, reduce our consumption of, and I couldn't think what to describe it as, so I'm gonna call it stuff, reuse things, recycle, upcycle old belongings. There's really, if you think, just take a little bit of time to think, there's hundreds of ways that we can respond to the climate change, uh, whether that's in our homes, our churches, our wider communities. And as Christians, we should be exploring ways that we can live differently, more simply, and to live our lives that demonstrates a commitment to Christ's kingdom on earth. And as Sir David Attenborough said, we really are at a unique stage in our history. Never have we, been, never have we had such awareness of what we are doing to the planet, and never have we had the power to do something about that surely we all have a responsible to care for our blue planet the future of humanity and indeed all life on earth now depends on us as followers of christ we need to take better care of god's creation and reduce the impact of climate change for all the creatures who dwell on earth the kingdom may not yet be fully on earth, but it's certainly worth working towards. So let's be the followers of Christ and share with everyone and everything the values of the kingdom of God. That's peace, joy, love and jealous and justice. And as I say, um, I'm going to challenge each of us to make one climate pledge today. Okay, so we're now going to have we got a slip of paper everyone? Right. So should we have a just a couple of minutes quiet while you can sort of think and then I will announce the hymn and we can collect in. I think that's fair. So, I think we'll remain seated. I think it might cause less disruption while we, we sing our final hymn, Beauty for Brokenness.
He offer you these, God, and say thank you. Thank you for the people at Castle. Thank you for their generosity in their giving and their climate pledges. Amen. blessing for us all. Deep peace of the running wave to us. Deep peace of the flowing air to us. Deep peace of the quiet earth to us. Deep peace of the shining stars to us. Deep peace of the sun of peace to us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.